Vegas Video Network Studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's Top of the Food Chain. And now your host, he's one part Mohawk, two parts Attitude, and a touch of what the f***, it's Al Mancini. I, I got like half the Vegas food mafia in the house tonight, and I get the worst applause ever. Thanks, guys. I can tell, tell how highly regarded I am in the food community here in town. That's okay. They love me out there somewhere in cyberspace. Welcome, guys, to Top of the Food Chain on the Vegas Video Network. I am your host, Al Mancini, and much like the beautiful nation of Thailand, which we will be discussing tonight, I have a deeply spiritual side embracing Buddhist beliefs such as karma, and at the same time, a dark, seedy underbelly so sick and twisted it would make the heads of most Americans pop off. Yes, that is why I love the lovely Thai people. And we'll be talking Thai food with one of the greatest Thai chefs, one of the greatest Asian chefs that has ever been here in Las Vegas. Not here anymore. We'll talk about why. Steve Wynn. <laughs> in just a minute. Get in, the, um, get in the chat room if you want to talk about how <coughs> Steve Wynn and Jet Tila are no longer working together. In the meantime, you're on the Vegas Video Network, home of all of the best Las Vegas programming, whether you're talking about real estate, whether you want to know who to bet on in the game, we tell you that every day in, what's the name of that show, Scott? Sports. Vegas Sports Day. They tell you who to bet on. Do you guys reimburse people's losses? No? You don't reimburse the losses, though, right? <laughs> Come on, man. You know, right now, these, these sharps are killing it. They're, I think they're at about almost 58% of their play of the day, which is huge in the sports betting world. Cool. So we got all these, all, all kinds of shows. You can watch them here at VegasVideoNetwork.com. Find them all on YouTube, audio and video versions on iTunes. We are on Roku. Um, we're at live stream. We're kind of all over the place. So tune in wherever you want. Every Friday night, they stream just about all of the shows together, except the guys who use the bad words and they can be heard in audio format at KSHP, 1400 AM. In the meantime, like I said, get in the chat room because we're going to be talking trash, we're going to be talking food, we're going to be talking Thai food, hopefully not trashy food, but you never know. Um, all that's going to be going on momentarily in the chat room, so log in there and you can start chatting with us in just a second. If you have a question for a future show, email it right now. It's food at VegasVideoNetwork.com. And finally, if you want to phone in a question or just talk dirty to us, it's 866-966-4599. And we will get to future shows. And we will get to that at a future show. In the meantime, Scott, how are you doing? Oh, wait, we forgot to talk about our sponsor. Yes. Once again, um, we're really thrilled to be sponsored by Bread and Butter. Um, these guys, you know, for the past six, eight weeks, I've been telling you how much I love Bread and Butter. Um, we had John Curtis on telling you what a great bakery and um, sandwich shop this place over on Eastern Avenue is about two weeks ago. Last week, the RJ uh, spotlighted it. And now, I don't know if anybody has, ever see, has yet to see the new issue of Desert Companion, Best of the City, but this is now out. And I love this because I actually helped write a bit of this. I chose some of the best things in the city. They asked me who I would write up for um, Best Bakery in Las Vegas, and I told them, look, I know who I would write up. I know it would be bread and butter, um, but it's not cool because they're sponsoring my show, and I don't want to be people thinking I'm biased. So they turned it over to another one of their great writers. He and I did not collaborate. We didn't talk about this. I didn't even know he was the one writing it. And Brock Radke, the great Brock Radke, on his own, also decided to say bread and butter is the best bakery in Las Vegas. So I don't know. The accolades just keep coming. Congrats to Chris Heron and everyone at Bread and Butter. Thanks a lot for sponsoring the show. One more week. Scott, no, I mean for one more week. I didn't mean that's all he has left. I don't know. I don't read the contracts. I've got no idea. But um, Scott, how are you, man? Good, busy. We're uh, we're expanding. I don't know if you know that or not, but we're looking to hire somebody here at the Vegas Video Network. So I've been uh, going through resumes, interviewing some intriguing people. What's and, the uh, What's the position? Can I do uh, it? Yeah, studio apprentice, uh, oh. helping us do the technical stuff here. So pre-show, post-show, during the show, all the stuff that you see Jacob and myself do. We need to bring somebody else in so we can continue to grow the business. Does that mean we're going to actually, I'm going to have to have my guests bring more alcohol to each show? Because yes, that's be the reason why we're growing, yes, the reason why we're growing the business is because when people bring in booze, we then go and sell it. 
Ah, there you go. That's how we make money. It's a, it's, a, it's a dicey business plan, but so far it's been very profitable. Well, I brought in my own booze today. Brought in some Sing Ka beer. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. And, um, yeah, we're going to be drinking that with um, the great Jet Teela momentarily. I don't know. Do, do we have anything we need to chat about? Anything I say I've already got two questions lined up for, uh, for Jet. So I say okay. we take a break and we get, we get Jet up there. Okay, cool. And, you know, we just got so many cool people in the audience right now. I don't even want to tell everybody because we'll have more chat questions for them than we have. Well, not for Jet, but we certainly... Should. We should acknowledge them at the end of the show, or else they're going to just take over the show. We're going to have to bring up some new chairs. They're just yes, I, w I want these. Guys. It takes you to get guests on my show. I see an entourage. I am the Asian version, right? There. Yeah. No one. I don't know if you're even Mike's, but okay. We're going to get to Jet, and he could talk about how he is the Asian entourage. You're not that guy from um, Hangover, though, right? My turtle. I've got my no. Okay, we'll be back, and we'll be talking to Jet in just a few. Right after this. Traditional media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. And we're back on the Vegas Video Network. Top of the food chain, I'm your host, Al Mancini. Joining me today, one of the, um, I don't want to say, we've had so many great chefs, but I'm thrilled to have him out here. One, one of the, one of the baddest know. ass chefs right. that has ever been on this show, the incredible Jet Tila. Thank you very much. How are you, man? Thanks for having me here, man. Oh, man, thanks for being had. I get this, I get this call, and I, I come into this room, and it looks like one of those like European kill boxes where... You don't know if you're, if you're going to get, I'm either going to get whacked or I'm going to do television. But like a serious, like you guys got a serious thing going on here. There's five cameras. Uh, it does still feel like a kill box, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But in okay, the best let's, way. Let's uh, go to the next guest. <laughs> um, yeah. it's got, you know, it's funny. Jet just, um, he was watching the preview and he saw um, Vic Vegas up there. And I, I realized there was one thing I want to talk to you about. Vic called me today. Oh, he's going to be back on the show very shortly. Well, that's great. He's yeah, a good man. He's, yeah, he's going to be back probably last week of March, first week of April. Good, good. So, um, so Jet, for those who do not know you, and I don't know how that's possible. How could anybody no, out there not know you? You know, at, at very best, I may be like a B-plus list, you know what I mean? Unless you're really deep into culinary, you know what I'm saying? Well, they're, so. if they're watching this show, they're not just casual culinary. That's what I'm saying. Right? And I can't believe we have questions ready. That, that's, that's amazing. Let's give your background, though. Um, you were right. born in L.A.? Uh, so I, I was born to the first Thai food family in America. So my parents came here in the 60s. We opened the first Thai market in the history of the country. We opened some of the first Thai restaurants. So uh, you know that kid when you walk into like a mom and pop Asian restaurant and you're like, I feel really bad for that kid because he probably goes right from school, does his homework mm -hmm. at the restaurant. That was me for like many years. Um, and then subsequently went on to uh, culinary school. They're in all, classically trained. Classically know all trained. The French stuff too. And then went to Japanese school. So I did right. sushi as well. And then worked my way up to some really good restaurants. And you came into Las Vegas. You opened up um, Wazuzu over yeah. at Encore. Incredible restaurant. Thank you. One Thank that, you um, yeah, you know, I just love the place. Thank you. And kind of pan-Asian, you know, I mean, it, if you want to say it, great sushi, great Chinese food, great Thai food. Yeah, that's kind of our core. I mean, realistically, um, you know, it's Vegas, right? Uh, we, we live to serve the guests that come to the hotel. So uh, we had to do everything very well. So Thai, Chinese, Japanese. And I said, it, we are talking in the past tense, but it was an, it's an amazing project. It still is an amazing restaurant. I've got no trash talk. But, but it is the past tense, no, and you are going to trash talk, because uh, here's the deal. <laughs> um, you're no longer with Win Encore. You know, you were originally there full-time, just like everybody right. that Mr. Wynn brought in. Right. And it was, you know, big deal. All the chefs are in the kitchen. And people started dropping like flies. And about, oh, just about a year ago... Um, you know, John Curtis, our Who? mutual acquaintance, we'll yeah, say. Right. You know, John really started talking trash about when they were forsaking the restaurant program. And I thought he was kind of talking out of his... Can Let's I say ass, Scott? <laughs> anyway, um, I, I thought he was, you know, really being a little too harsh until I just saw a, a bit of what he... I, I still think he was really a little over the top at the time. But yeah. a lot of what he was saying has really come to pass over the past years. We've lost a lot of chefs in Wynn. And you're the latest. You went from being there full time to one day or one week a 
a month. week a month. And then now not and at all. No weeks a month. Do they care right. about food over there anymore? I mean, uh, that was such a beautiful food program. You know, again, you, I got to stay somewhat cool, only because, you know, it was <laughs> it's a great a lot place. of lawyers. Yeah, and I want to, like, make it out of the city alive. <laughs> <laughs> And when and when I get into the city, I don't you know I don't want to be looking over my shoulder all the time. Um, but you know, it, it, a lot has changed, right? Um, again, I thought John was being a little sensational. Sensationalism is that right? He's like sensational. Sensationalistic. Sensationalistic. Um, John and I have had a really rough past, you know. Yeah. And, well, uh, John and I have a really rough present. Exactly. So, you know. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, like I mean, no, all, all ever, on the real, yeah, things have changed quite a bit. I think um, the regime has changed. I think um, the food. Remember, it used to be chefs in the kitchen. Remember, the whole thing was, "Hey, man, uh, you come here, and every chef's going to come out to." Yeah, to it was come everybody for except you. Danielle Ballou who got right. a pass. But everybody right. else was all going to be there. They they chained you to the kitchen. Right. It was like you know, like one of these death boxes back in the it, kitchen it, it for was, you it, guys. It, right? it was a lot like this room, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it was. But um, no. So things have changed quite a bit, and I think you know, I, I'm a creator, man. You know, and and I need to be. I'm, I need to be creating. I need to be touching tables, and. You know, I fulfilled my three-year commitment, and for me, honestly, it's just, it's my time to move on and do other things. So that's all it is. I mean, three years for a chef is like dog years. Like, I feel like I'm in there for 18, so, right. you know. So, well, that would be 21 in dog years, but I don't know. 6, 12, 18. Maybe Thai dogs Oh, you have seven years. Thai dogs, yeah. six Thai dogs years. don't live as long. I don't know. Right. Uh, we'll get to what you're doing in the future, but first, we've got questions already lined up. Scott, what's going on? Yeah, so Sally wants to know, she, uh, she says, Jet, you've been on many TV shows, so other than the Vegas Video Network, <laughs> Pillbox. They're the only show. She, write, she wrote that. Uh, which is your favorite show, your favorite appearance? Well, that's a good one. I think uh, my favorite show has been Iron Chef America. Um, to date. To date. I and mean, refresh people, today. what happened on that show? Oh, so, um, so uh, I go up against Morimoto, right? Master Chef Morimoto. And the ingredient is seaweed. So, um, you know, it's kind of like, you know. <laughs> They're just throwing him yeah. a softball there. Yeah, exactly. It, like a slow pitch, you know, uh, softball. <laughs> they just and, rolled it to him on the ground. I, they, and, you know, and it was seaweed against Morimoto, and, and we, we came out swinging. Like, we really came out swinging. I brought my two best guys at the time, and uh, it was a four-point difference, one point in flavor. He beat us by one point in flavor. Um, two points in plating, which is BS, by the way. You run that tape. <laughs> Still bitter? Yeah. No. It's a, you know, it tastes a little bitter. And, you know, we just made, um, you know, they're doing that top five right now, um, kind of the regird shows. So I think we made, like, best plating or something like that. So, um, so Iron Chef America was great. And, you know, I got... You, get, you can make fun of her all you want, but um, Jada is, is, is pretty, A, hot. Why would I make fun of her? You know, a I, lot of people like, give her a hard time. I may hit on her someday. <laughs> what do you mean, may hit on her? Well, I mean, I may get, uh, yeah, I may right. get close enough to hit yeah, on her, okay, is what I go. meant by that. Exactly. <laughs> Once I'm in that vicinity, no, it's, you know, that I will be. I will tease her. something now like, in the show. So you might be seeing me on Chopped as a judge this year. So. Really? Um, that could be happening. Could be possible. Very, happening. very possible. A lot of local people I think we're going to be seeing on Chopped this year. I'm not allowed to announce very many names. None of us yet. can. No. Right. Well, actually, yeah. I was just offered. Or can we? I was, we can't as far as I know right exactly. now. But, um, but I was just offered the chance to interview a chef who's going to do it and be the one who breaks it here in Vegas. Oh, very but, good. And, and it's no one in this room. <laughs> right, right, right. But, um, right. It's not you, but it was somebody else. Uh, and good, good, for, good for them. Good on them and good for them for, for giving Vegas some representation. And you just, speaking of your television career, you yeah. just got back from Thailand. That's right. Shooting a special on Thai food for whom? For PBS. So it's going to be carried um, through Central Valley PBS um, all over the middle of America. And I'm sure we'll be able to get it kind of coast to coast. So it's going to PBS show. It's going to be a PBS show off the menu. It's called Off the Menu, and it's just about you know like me, my my story, traveling back to Thailand and kind of rediscovering where I came from, and learning regional like fun places to eat, dishes that I've always wanted to know. And it, it was is it a, a single show. show or is it a series? Or? It's a series. So there's going to be six of them all Did together. You just tell me that and I forgot it. Sorry. No, no, man. I mean, you know, these singhas get together. Yeah, these singhas do get you, man. You know. So, I had a lot of them when I was in Thailand. Uh, yeah, like I've had so many. I got actually a Singha tattoo when I really drunk. Really? <laughs> nice. Bad. Really, really bad. <laughs> hey, there's worse things you could have gotten. There's worse from things you Thailand. could do in Thailand or right. bring home from Thailand because you got really drunk, man. Um, Scott, another question. Is there a chef that Jet admires, either famous or maybe a local one people don't know about? Wow. I mean, we re people actually are asking questions. Uh, that's cool. Um, a chef that I admire. Let's see. Uh, you know what? I'll have to think about that. Um, you know, 
No great unsung chefs here in Vegas? In Vegas, who do I admire in Las Vegas? Uh, Nobody. He hates like, the whole I town. I hate everybody. He's never coming back. Best. Like, why would I admire anybody? When, <laughs> Let's when let you I admire that. myself. No, let me think about that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to not be cliche. I'm trying not to say, you know, Keller, who, who I, whom I, I, I absolutely adore. Um, Martin Yan, for like being my influence, for showing, you know, some Asian kid at home that, you know, we can kind of, we can transcend you know, the, the, the world of French chefs. I mean, I think Martin was a huge inspiration. Yeah, for, I've only met him once, but really cool guy. Really great guy. And, and you did know, a thing for Big Brothers, Big Sisters one time that I was actually working with, and it brought some kids that I know down to, you know, experience it. No, I just grabbed them off the street, to be honest. You're like, <laughs> punched them in the face. <laughs> yeah, and like, said, come, come here, here yellow man. Martin, yeah. <laughs> come here, yellow man. Or you some dude that looked Asian. And, and <laughs> Martin. No, I like Martin Jacques. I thought you had, I was saying I was stealing the kids off the oh, street. Oh. <laughs> To bring into the kill yeah, box. Just, right. <laughs> right. Um, so I want to, let's get started because we could just okay. talk about your career forever, which is right, cool. Right. But I it's, do want to also talk a bit about food. Sure, man. You, you just got it. back from Thailand. Mm -hmm. What we try to do here a lot is give people just the basic 101s of the cuisine. Okay. Everyone eats Thai cuisine. I mean, not everyone. Some people out there don't. But I'm hoping if you tune in here, you've had Thai food. There's a lot that people don't really get about it. I mean, Thai has different regional cuisines, much like Chinese does. You bet. But when you walk into Chinese, a Chinese restaurant, it's labeled huh? Cantonese, Szechuan, Szechuan with a little hot pepper next right, to it, you know. Right. And, um, it's kind of dummy proof. You know what you're getting. Could, Thai, as I understand it, there are four regional cuisines. Very good. Mr. Mancini, there are four regional cuisines. So we start with, my family's from the north. All right, so we start with northern, or what's called nua, cooking, northern food. Um, and I guess the best way to tie people into regions is giving them, like, hallmarks of that dish, right? So we know larb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Lop is a, a northern dish. Um, so what what classify what classifies food as northern? For first of all, a lot of meat intake, right? It's it, um, Thailand is geographically pretty diverse. The north is full of, full of animals, so we eat a lot of protein up there. Um, we do sticky rice up in the north. So we've eaten sticky rice or either north or northeastern, which is another region. Mm -hmm. um, and we do something called chili dips, num prick. Um, and there's two types of uh, num pricks, and I'm not trying to say the bad word. I'm not trying to sneak in a bad <laughs> you, you don't word. have to edit that out, Scott. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> num prick means chili dip, and we do um, num pick num, which is a roasted eggplant and green style chili dip you eat with raw vegetables. And we do a num prick ong, which is a, it almost looks like um, a cooked down bolognese. Like, because it's okay. meat, it's tomatoes, but it's, then it's chili and garlic. I don't know if I've had that. And uh, northern sausage, so everyone knows northern sausage, northern sausage. absolutely delicious. So those are the four hallmark dishes of the north. Okay. Um, where do you want to go next? So go to northeast. Northeastern. Yeah. All right. Which kind of borders Laos, right? So we call that style of eating isan, e s a r n or i s a r n. So isan is um, is uh, anything very Laotian. So they also eat sticky rice in the northeast. But now let's start thinking about papaya salad. Mm -hmm. Any kind of salad that has roasted rice. On top, that's that yum flavor. We need to talk about yum because yum is hot, sour, salty, sweet. Right. And that's kind of the hallmark of Thai food. So, and papaya salad. So, isan is papaya salad. And it's so, to, I, to classify, when you see yeah. yum in something, it's a reference to the flavor profile, not to the ingredients. Absolutely. Right. So, yum, tom yum, mm -hmm. hot and sour soup. Soup, right. Yum, anything. Yum, nia, which is a beef salad. So, um, Two regions. You want to go deeper, or we're just kind of skimming um, the surface let's just here. Just skim the surface of the, with the other two. You have, okay. of course, then you have Western and Southern. So right? let's instead of going west, it's really kind of like what we call Bangkok cuisine. Okay. Um, and if you think about it, like the word, um, so if we bring everything to the middle, right? And and it's city food. So uh, Bangkok cuisine is like you get the best like duck noodles, right? You get the best pad thai. You get the best kind of everything in the middle, and then the real uh, a real region that's coming on really strong right now because of one particular restaurant in LA um, is called is Southern Cuisine. Mm -hmm. So Southern Cuisine is non-coconut curries, right? So they're these kind of soups. I was under the impression stuff. that there was a fair amount of coconut milk in Southern Cuisine, no? Mm -hmm. So okay. that's Indian. Southern Indian is coconut, but Southern Thai, no, okay. there's no coconut. Very strong, rich tasting spicy food. Mm -hmm. And because the South is so hot, any kind of meat has been preserved. Fish has been preserved, so you get more of that acidic, spicy, very kind of kind of strong fishy flavors in food because they make shrimp paste down south too. Okay, now, and I want to talk now how you eat and how you order. If 
I mean, obviously, if you walk into a Thai restaurant in America, you can eat however the hell you want. Absolutely. Um, and nobody's going to look at you funny. But Americans like to, you know, learn how to hold chopsticks right and things like that because that way they can feel cool in front of their friends. Right. I had a guest and, last night at our pop-up say, why don't you have chopsticks? I'm not going to out anybody. Right. No, but that's I a don't very hurt anyone's question feelings. because I was talking to some friends last night who said they brought people to Lotus of Siam, our best-known Thai restaurant in Las Vegas, and the guest asked for chopsticks. If you don't know out there, Thai food is not consumed with chopsticks. This is it. This is how you eat Thai food, right here. We are a civilized culture. <laughs> don't the, lump us together with all those Don't other lump us people. with Chinese and Vietnamese and Filipino. Um, actually, Filipinos also use these. So, um, but it is fork and spoon, spoon. no knife. No it, knife. No knife, traditionally. This, these are your knives, and, your, and this is all the utensils you need. Your, your spoon and your power hand. It's a very efficient way of eating, actually. So... Um, you take the spoon. First, you could eat soup with a spoon. You eat rice with a spoon. Uh, you cut like you would pretend this is a knife. And we're very English because King Rama V is the king that was known to bring Thai culture into the modern era. And this is, if I may, correct me because no, it's no, your no, history. It's me, just I've, I've read things. As I understand it, originally before this king, you used one hand to eat. And I think it was a spoon, but you only used your right hand, and that was it. And then a bunch of white people came over and said, look at all this great cutlery we have. you got to be cool. you got to eat like the white people. And he said, spread it out. Let me see what I like. Knife, screw it. The knife sucks. I want a fork and a spoon, and that's it. I'll tell you a good story. So it's, it's, that's almost there. So remember the king and I? That's Rama IV. That's, his, that's actually his grandfather, Rama III. So one of the little kids that um, Miss whatever her name was, British chick, um, <laughs> you know, what I mean? you ever seen King and I? I've never seen All right. the King and I. Let me let me let me simplify this further. So this is the king that gets educated in England, right? right? He has a, he has his nanny that's British. He's like the My Fair Lady of Kings. He's like the Renaissance man of okay. kings. So before him, sorry, high no. people, no offense you know intended what? to your great king. I just, it's just my culture. No. I mean, what does it matter, right? Sorry, uh, sorry. No, so, my no bad. Sink up. Blame the sink up. There you go. It's the beer talking. Um, so this is a king that goes to, goes to England, gets educated in England, and brings back um, you know, more of like an English society. So okay. that's when we went to the fork and spoon. And that's when, before him, uh, no commoner could look at a king or to get his head cut off. He'd be instantly taken out. And he's like, this is bullshit. I mean, this is wrong. <laughs> he, Taught myself. He wanted people looking at his head. Right. He probably had a, was, was that Yule Brenner's head? That, that, you know, <laughs> again, I'm going to leave this king and I, because you know the king and I to this day is banned in Thailand. Really? You can't watch that show. And you know why? The quick, the quick story of a why. So in the King and I, which you haven't watched, all right, <laughs> um, Miss Anna, who's the, the, the works for the King, has these one-on-one -on -one conversations with the King at a level that would never have happened in real life. Right. So because of that, it's still banned. So anyway, back to fork and back spoon. Back to fork and spoon. Spoon, power hand, fork, left hand. Shovel food into said spoon, and 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 crush it into your mouth. Right. So that's how we eat. Order like a pro. Don't ask for chopsticks because you're basically telling people, I don't know what the uh, hell All you people look alike to me. Is yeah, what right. You're basically exactly. saying, right? Chinese, Japanese, Japanese what do I care? I'm not going to continue. But no, it, I mean, it is interesting. Just to reiterate, you, you use the spoon the way that Americans use a fork. Absolutely. And you use right. the fork the way that Americans use a knife. And isn't it crazy inefficient? It like, try eating rice with a fork. It falls right through. Like, I think <laughs> we've got it figured out. You, you are the right? wiser people. I don't know. I think we're like, why are these white people eating this stuff that falls through? It, just, it doesn't make <laughs> and sense. And our rice doesn't even stick together. That's so it doesn't okay. even make any sense. Well, Uncle Ben's is hardly rice, yeah, right? Right. I'm sorry. Um, not a sponsor. No. It's not a sponsor. We've got another question, Scott. Can we offend another culture, please? Yeah, just got off, just got <laughs> Bring off the phone. It. Just got off the phone with the good people at Uncle Ben's. Thanks. Right. <laughs> Uh, uh, what is your favorite restaurant or Thai restaurant here in Las Vegas? Oh, man. I've battled Curtis. I've battled Jonathan Gold on this. I've battled so many people. Well, it's so this. easy not to because you're just not going to say the obvious. Well, right? you know, it, and it's not even because I want to be cool or counterculture. I, I'm just being real. Lotus, you know we're talking I mean? about the, the obvious one, Lotus of Siam, which Jonathan Gold in L.A. has called the best Thai restaurant in America because he apparently... As Max Jacobson said, has eaten in every or he's Thai getting, restaurant like, in America. Favors in the back room or something. Yeah, I, I mean, I. I, don't, I don't oh. oh wait, I say that. I'm sorry. No, now that's I'm okay. offending. No. Look, you're you get your name on the wall, like yeah, I can trash my own people, so that's okay. You trashing Jonathan Gold? I thought. I yeah, know. Gold. I mean, Jabba. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I'm in. I'm in. I'm oh. sorry. You I'm know what sorry. you do have to love about Lotus of Siam? It is in walking distance of an alternative theater 
an S and M leather shop, yes. two on premises sex swingers clubs, <laughs> oh, and two. a gay two straight I know on premises. The so yeah, there's okay. Green Door, and then there's Green another Door one there. Really. Yeah, I uh, know. I think I've seen you in Green Door. Uh, uh, <laughs> Were you wearing one of those masks from the Kubrick movie? <laughs> but no. Okay, back oh, to the restaurant. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Favorite Thai restaurant. Okay, no joke. Say. You know what? Honestly, um, there's a little restaurant in Summerlin, and um, it's called. Heck, I need my I need my producer. Where I need my my representation. Yeah, it's Nita, Nita, Well, in Thai we would say Nitaya, right. but I think here they call it Nitaya's Secret kitchen. kitchen. Secret Kitchen, right? Dude, I think it's really it. And that's that's my favorite Thai restaurant in Vegas. And everybody, yeah, everybody loves the papaya salad there, right? Is that, right, you know, and the fried um, the fried morning glory salad is off the hook. It's authentic. It's what you're getting in Thailand right now. So they're they're staying on top of it. They're really staying on top of it. Again, about ordering in a Thai restaurant. Um, because you go into a Thai restaurant in America, and for the most part, it is separated very American-wise. It is separated into appetizers. Right. And then you've got your jerky and things like that up there. And then your entrees, your rice, your noodles, but, and regular entrees. And then desserts, which is usually sticky rice and some right. fruit. But, um, but Americans, of course, are going to want to go and order appetizers, have them served as a course. And then they're going to want a second course, maybe a shared rice. Mm -hmm. But each of them gets their own entree. That ain't how you do it in Thailand. No, right? you bet. So first of all, you don't go to a Thai restaurant. Like there, there will never be in a Thai restaurant equivalent of Denny's, right? Because you <laughs> oh. won't roll in and have fifty things on the menu. All Thai people on earth go to a restaurant specifically for a certain dish. So you and I will be hanging out, right? And after the show, you'll be like, you know what? I feel like maybe there's pad Thai. You go to the restaurant whose family's been doing pad Thai for three generations. So you feel like. Um, papaya salad, you go to the papaya salad restaurant. So first of all, you never go to a Thai restaurant for an overall experience, right? You congregate with your peeps and go, what are we eating tonight? We're eating the best pork jerky, period, with sticky rice. You're going to go to that restaurant. Right. And second, it's all family style, right? It's mostly family style. The exception to the family style rule is usually like what, what you would call like a quick business lunch. I'm on the street. I need a five-minute fill-up, and I go to the vendor that sells this one product. We are going to talk about street food in just a second, awesome. but we've got a question. Could you just spell the name of that restaurant that you recommended? I believe it's N-I-T-T-A-Y-A apostrophe S. Nitaya's Secret, Secret Kitchen. Secret Kitchen. And absolutely order the, um, the, 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 first of all, the papaya salad, papaya salad. and also the uh, morning glory salad. It's, it's pretty, it's transformative. It's transformative. It's transformative. <laughs> if it ain't Lotus of Siam picture on your wall, Okay, here's my issue. Let me clarify. <laughs> because you know what? I am going to get in a little bit of trouble, and I don't care. But let me, let me defend you're, you're, my position. You're attacking a James Beard award-winning yeah, chef. Right. <laughs> I'm a Thai local restaurant with a James Beard nomination. I don't smell any nepotism <laughs> at all, right? Okay. But here's my, let me defend my position really quick. Um, Lotus Am's great restaurant was the, was the best Thai restaurant in Vegas. But the issue is this. You get a different meal um, if you're press and if you come from gourmet and if your picture's on the wall. I've, no, I've always gone into Joe Schmo, and like, there's, there's 20 restaurants in L.A. that would better food. I've always gone in unannounced, and I enjoy it. I've always liked the food. I like when I dine there, but I, I've never been as blown away as anybody else has been. And another thing that I love, I have white people telling me that I don't know Thai food. Is it, there's something <laughs> wrong with this picture here. You know what I mean? Like, you've got to love it. I'm like... <laughs> Look, I'm Thai. You know, you know, white people just can be annoying. No, I sometimes. love white people, but I don't like it when I get these writers <laughs> telling me exactly how you know that I'm not liking my own food. So that's well, one thing that they do at Lotus, though. They do separate the northern Thai menu is completely separate. You know, we just spoke about different types of, of Thai cuisine. In Lotus, if you do not ask for the Northern Thai menu, you don't see the Northern Thai menu. You won't get menu. it at all. You don't get it at all. You've got to kind of be in the know. At least right. last time I was there, you guys too, right out there? Yeah. So you kind of have to say, I, I want the Northern Thai menu. So if you, and I'm not discouraging people from trying it. No, also, no, 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 me neither. I love Lotus. I just don't tell me. I, I can't say it's the best Thai restaurant. Also, um, my friend Jim Bagley has been into a place called um, Pan Asian. Is it Pan Asian that Jim's been raving about? No, you don't know. You're, we got a go-to guy, man. Splurge Monkey. Splurge Monkey. Yes, splurge splurge. Monkey. yes the Splurgey Monkey. Got it. But um, that's supposed to be good Thai. But you didn't ask for my opinion. You asked for Jeff. Sure so did. let's go back to Scott. Yeah, does Jet have any Vegas specific ventures planned? Oh here? man, this is the the thousand dollar question. Um, let's just say right now that I love Vegas, right? Um, it's sad that it, I'm not sad that I'm not at Win anymore, but I'm sad that I'm not at Vegas anymore. So um, permanently. So yes, I'm. I, there's things in the works um, that I just can't announce yet, but um, 
I would love to have a place here again. And you came back last night to work with Tony Abaganam, who was on last week's show, and you and Jet did with him a pop-up, which we've spoken about many times on the show, so I don't have to explain what that is awesome. anymore. Awesome. Um, and you did it at Origin India, uh, one of my favorite Indian restaurants here in town. Uh, but we, you didn't do Indian food. You did Thai street food. Right, right. We talk, this is getting us back to what you were saying about the exception. Because when I went to Thailand, I called Max Jacobson and some foodies I know who had been over there, and I'm like, what's the best restaurant to eat in? You know, what is the Robichon of Thailand? And they were just like, dude. What did they say? Don't even, they're like, like just eat the street food or, you know, a tiny little, maybe not a cart in the street. If you want to sit down, there are places that are just kind of one half block back off the street, but they're kind of still street food. You bet. And they're like, don't bother. And, of course, like an idiot, I still looked up, what does Zagat say is the best or <laughs> something? And I did all the sit-down restaurants, and they were not nearly as good as what you get for 50 cents or a dollar on the streets of Bangkok. You know, the cool thing about street food is, um, again, like everybody I cooked with in Thailand, and every, the common denominator in great street food is the same family making that one dish for four generations. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's insane. I mean, these people are artisans, right? I've boiled chicken, like Thai-Nanese chicken rice. I've done only Thai-Nanese chicken rice for 70 years. Who's going to be the best at that dish? It's yeah. these street food vendors. You know what I mean? And they don't have to worry about overhead and labor. They're like, I just, like, leave me alone. I just want to cook the best whatever in the Do world. Do you see this on menus here in Las Vegas, any of these street food dishes ever? No, you know what, um, let me think, let me think. You know, it's hard to find dishes like that because when you have a brick and mortar restaurant, you need to worry about things like, I'm going to get really nerdy right now, you need to worry about menu mix, you need to worry about you know, product utilization and all that crap, but um, when you're a street food vendor, you buy I ingredients for one dish and you make it right. great. So it's hard to find good street food. That, that, that salad at Nataya's, though, is a good example of, a unitasking great dish that's been refined over and over again. And khao soy at um, I, Lotus of Siam. It's the only place in, in Vegas you can find the dish I made last night, and we'll talk We're about gonna it. We're going to get into that right after khao we soy. take this question, though. And Nate wants to know, if I wanted to try making a simple Thai food at home, what would you suggest? Um, that's a good one. Uh, if, if you are a proficient cook, if you're a very proficient cook, um, let me give you four ingredients. Let me, let me give you, break it down to making Thai food at home. Fish sauce, <clears throat> think about everything in the yum spectrum. Hot, sour, salty, sweet. Fish sauce is salty. By itself, it kind of smells rank. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's great to play a joke, like you know, put it in someone's Makes upholstery. Sense. Awesome. Nice. Like, I'm going to put it in the kill box before I leave. Not in <laughs> not And I'm going to let it house. ferment <laughs> and for, for the next guest. Fish sauce is salty. Fresh lime juice is sour. Fresh lime juice, not that crap that says real lime because it ain't real lime. Or this, in the little plastic lime. Right. You don't want that. So <laughs> real. If it Pick doesn't it right actually come from a tree. lime. <laughs> if, it, if the cap screws off, forget it, right? No, no bueno. No bueno. Um, palm sugar. Forget palm sugar too fancy. How about brown sugar? Right? And the last thing is Thai chilies. If you took these four ingredients and you blended them together, and let's say you took a piece of pork, smashed in a little bit of garlic or lemongrass, you've just made a pretty awesome uh, grilled Thai pork. So, and lemongrass, I mean, to me, is just such a key ingredient to Thai food. You bet. Um, now, Thai chilies. Yeah. I don't even want to get into which chef I may have heard once substituted jalapenos for Thai chilies. Wow. But um, You're not going to out that guy? Not going to out that guy. All right. But that being said, you, I mean, we're, Thai chili is a totally different world. Right? Yeah, Thai chili is up. So in Thai, they're, they're called pikinu. And literally translated, good piece of food trivia for food nerds out there. Um, it's, it's rat dropping chili. Pretty awesome mm, name. Yum. Pretty <laughs> awesome name. Makes you go yummy yum. Um, so the hot, they're, really hot, they're really small and they're really spicy. Okay, so it's really about the burn profile. is Like Serrano, a jalapeno is kind of like, mm, kind of hot, mm -hmm. a little sweet, a little like grassy. Thai hot is just like... Thai chilies is boop, right to there. And we did it. Sustained. We did a chili show a while back with Mike Miner, and he brought everything in, including the ghost chilies. And, oh my you know, gosh! Did you eat a ghost chili? No, man. I was. I brought it home to see which one of my <laughs> friends would be stupid enough to eat it. But no, have you eaten a ghost? I, chili? I have eaten a ghost chili, and that's a whole level of stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> an, like why? Yeah. At that's... that point, your palate's blown out, and there's nothing left. I know? think everything between my palate and a very <laughs> distant part of my body will be right. blown out all the way through. That one burns going in and coming. Yeah, I would think so. Um, um, so you, you talked about those are the four ingredients. So uh, the dish, the best dish okay, to try with. If you're gonna if you're gonna start to cook Thai food, I would probably do um, like a Thai beef salad. And if they go to my website, I'm sure there's a there's probably, there's probably a, uh, a recipe there. Or email me and I'll send you a recipe. Like I'm happy to do that. So cool. you know what I mean. Um, just start with either 
uh, Thai beef salad, papaya salad, or maybe a tom yum soup. That tom yum soup starts the journey into Thai cooking because you play with all the herbs, you play with messing around with the yum. You know, that's like, Thai food's like karate, right? <laughs> okay. It's like Muay Thai. It takes many years to really master, so. Okay. I got all Mr. Miyagi, I'm sorry. Just, yeah, it was really, it was waxing on and waxing Seriously. off over here. Man. I was just waxing. <laughs> it's just whacking off. Yeah, yeah, that exactly. Was. But, um, exactly. Best thing to drink with it is a little... Um, anything with bubbles, yo. Anything with bubbles. Beer, obviously. Champagne, uh, Prosecco. I like bubbles, and I like, um, I like that because it, it really complements the, the spicy and the sweet notes. I know we're getting close to the end, but I do want to run through a couple of the great dishes you made for us last night. Yeah. Could, we, um, could we knock these up, up here if we could start off? This is your first dish, first course last night. And this is, again, street, great street food dish. Oh, man. Tell us what this is. So we've got a shrimp, green mango, and coconut salad here. It was incredible, but in the, the question that I started asking at my table, and people, I think, agreed with me, those shrimp uncooked, right? Or maybe just kind of ceviche style? You got it right, right? on the head. You soak them in lime juice until yeah. the, 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 the acid does its thing, and it just it, it pops, right? Yeah. And literally, the, the cells of the shrimp are snappy. Yeah, that, that was great. I mean, so much better than if you had boiled up shrimp, you know, which it wouldn't allow it to really blend with all those Good other flavors that way. I try. Good I try. Salad, man. You yeah, Curtis didn't it. notice it, but, you know. <laughs> well, he doesn't eat anything, anything with the street in its the name. The will never go to Yeah, anyway. he's not real happy. <laughs> yeah. Next up, we had, um, oh, pigtails. What did you think? When you said pigtails, I was thinking Cindy Brady. Right. I mean, you know, but. You're thinking no, the kill nobody box. Nobody here? Nobody watching? I was thinking much. the kill box myself. <laughs> yeah. um, but, no, those were great. I mean, again. You know, that's a rough one because he serves out the pigtails, which are great, but they're all on the bone. There's a lot of fat on that meat. A ton of fat. A ton of fat. Which is awesome. Um, nice crispy skin on the outside. A little bit of actual flesh there. Mm -hmm. A ton of bone. You've you got to pull that all off, and then you sit it on a small leaf of lettuce, and you kind of eat it taco style with, what was the herbs that you brought? Uh, to I, I did uh, Thai basil, mint, and cilantro. Yeah. And um, fantastic. Underutilized piece of the pig. Underutilized yeah. piece of the animal. You have to enjoy a good fatty dish you know if you, you, yeah 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 right you can't be somebody who like doesn't eat the duck skin when they eat duck i mean if you're that person you're not going to dig that yeah dish. some so i had one lady totally freak out yesterday yeah. and it made me so happy you gotta made freak him out made me really happy well, you should hang out with brian howard when he's making offal meat right know? i mean every wednesday night but what, again enough on that we got two more dishes i want to get through that you made um what was this again that we so this is called cow soy right this is the staple of northern it's a curry soup Right, but the nice thing, it's like basically a curry with a demi glace mm -hmm. within, that's the secret of cow soy, and it's in egg noodles, and it's got braised meat on top. And that was the most um, solid pieces of meat of, of all the dishes that you had. That was the most American palate friendly, you know, almost like a nice little cube piece of meat. Stroganoff-ish. Yeah. Right, like, I mean, I'm trying to think of like relatable foods, like right. very stroganoff, big white egg noodles, kind of a creamy sauce. And then the last dish that you made was, um, what did we have there? Oh, the chicken. Yard bird. Yes. Straight up yard bird. So if you, you take a jack load of lemongrass and galanga and garlic. You grind that into some um, curry. You marinate it in coconut milk for like four days until it just totally saturates. And you roast it or fry it off. But again, not necessarily going to be friendly to people who want big chunks of meat. Because you've got to pull the meat off of some, you know, what, were there wings that you were using what, in there? I forgot and, that chickens have bones in them. Yeah, I know. Like, people or meat that have has bones in it. Yeah, people tend to get annoyed with that fact. Yeah, we served know? it with sticky rice and some sweet chili sauce. I mean, pretty authentic yeah. stuff last night. And that was excellent. So look, man, I can't wait till you do another pop up. Meantime, you have a new restaurant opening, the Charleston in Santa Monica. It's a speakeasy. Um, we're gonna do outside of being an amazing speakeasy with really great beverages, we're gonna do a lot of these cool cool dinners. Um, Evan uh, Kleiman from Angeli Cafe is going to pop up there. I'm going to pop up there. We're going to try to get some Vegas people to pop up there. And you've got a lot of pop-ups going on, I mean, all the time. You kind of, what's, what's the name of the? Bistronomics. Bistronomics, sorry. Featured in the New York Times a few weeks ago. Because that's who you want writing about L.A. That's what I'm <laughs> saying, know? yeah. But, yeah, I mean, Bistronomics, there's pop-ups all over Los Angeles. Um, and look for me to do pop-ups in Chicago, New York, San Francisco this year, too. So we're working with uh, Kikoman. You to do some other pop-ups. Oh, there. cool. And you can track all of that at um, chefjet.com, right? And uh, Facebook me. That's like, if you really want to stay in touch with me, Facebook me, and, uh, and I'll tweet it out and Facebook it out at you. That's the best way. Yeah. But um, you do keep a calendar on the website as well. Um, in the meantime, Chef Jeff Tila, we want to thank you. want to introduce our great audience members yeah. that we have? We uh, yeah. You know what? Um, we, got, we, got, we got Fuku Colin from <laughs> Fuku Burger, right? We got Brock Radke's out there. And... 
Kennedy. <laughs> okay. The lovely daughter of Colin. So, from Fuku Burger. And Fuku Burger, of course, one of the top food trucks here in Las Vegas. Check them out. What are you, FukuBurger.com? Um, BrockRadke.com. Follow everybody. You can follow me. I'm on AlMancini.net. Twitter, at AlMancini.Vegas. Buy my damn book because I need a royalty check coming up on April 15th is royalty check day, and that's also <laughs> pay the government day. So what you buy now, I get to give to Uncle Sam for the stuff I didn't give him last year. So that's Eating Las Vegas, the 50 essential restaurants. You can get that on Amazon. I think it's like 9 bucks and change, 10 bucks and change, something like that. And I get a shiny couple nickels out of See, that, Two great writers that do that. One's kind of weird and wears a funny suit, like he's going yeah. to the Derby. I'm kidding. And also I'm Max kidding. Jacobson does it as well. No, that, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Cool, man. Well, thanks a lot for coming down, man. Hey, I appreciate lot, it. Thanks a brother. Thanks for having me. Thank you. We'll see you in a week.